<coughs> thank you for your kind introduction and, uh, and welcome to this University of Hong Kong and Kaduri Farm and Botanical Garden. It is a great pleasure for me to come again to Hong Kong and be guest of Kaduri Farm and the Botanical Garden, which is a wonderful place. Um, if you have not visited it, I can recommend you. <laughs> and particularly I recommend you because uh, it's a farm and also a garden where you can grow food. Uh, when people in uh, England or many people who are watching this uh, talk on webcast think of Hong Kong, they think of this island with high-rise buildings and, and very uh, sort of um, industrial city. But finding uh, a place like Taipo, uh, a town, traditional town, and nearby this uh, great botanical garden, but also a farm, is a wonderful discovery. And uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, Hong Kong is not these high-rise industrial buildings and banks, they're also farms. It's a wonderful thing. And because, in my view, no city should be without surrounding land producing food for itself. Nature and culture should always remain partners. When the nature and culture are divorced, both suffer. So, at this moment, many of our cities are focusing on industry and uh, maybe some arts, galleries, theatres, concert halls, but no land, no ponds, no animals, no place to grow some vegetables or fruit, no fruit trees. And then you go in the countryside, People think, oh, we are sort of backward, we are not quite advanced, we don't have facilities of the cities. And so many rural people, including in China, but also in India, in Africa, in Europe, they feel deprived of culture. And therefore, they want to go to the cities and find jobs there. And so both are losing, the cities are losing the rural uh, pastoral, food, fruit, uh, trees, wonderful uh, nature. And the uh, rural country, rural areas, the villages are also suffering, deprived of this uh, culture. So what I would like to see is that some kind of partnership between city and rural areas. So nature and culture in partnership. And then, growing of food is not something for those who are uneducated, peasants, uh, don't know anything else, how to operate uh, computers, how to operate high technology. Therefore, they are uneducated farmers and peasants. And they will be paid a little bit, maybe uh, $50 or $100. And I don't know Hong Kong dollar, how it is priced, but in, if it was in England, it would be 10 pounds uh, an hour or something like that. But if you are working in a city, in a bank, or in other big offices, you might be paid 100 pounds an hour or thousands pound, 1,000 pounds an hour. So this great dis disparity between rural and urban, and we have somehow come to believe and think that farming, gardening, growing food is somehow low level work and getting your hands dirty I say to my city friends dirt is not dirty if there was no dirt you have no food on your table even though now the food you are op opening from supermarkets or packaged three times in plastic but inside that plastic very neat, clean-looking plastic is food made of or coming out of dirt, the soil. Therefore, dirt is not dirty. We are made of the soil. 
we are made of the earth. So we need to bring back that dignity of labor, dignity of working on the soil. Why a farmer having even maybe thousand acres, and some of my references would be uh, more British than uh, Hong Kong or Chinese, but why a farmer, and in England it is true, that a farmer might have 1,000 acres of land and cannot make a living. Why? Why our food production should be put so low that they have to be subsidized? And we all want cheap food. We don't want to give any dignity, any respect, any honor to our food growers, but we want to, them to produce very cheap food. We are not prepared to pay. We are prepared to pay big money for computers or mobile phones or other um, great uh, invention of technology. But when it comes to food, it must be cheap. So we have to change our mind, change our thinking. We can live without technology. We can live without uh, many other things that we value, but we cannot live without food. So simple, so elementary. But we have forgotten that simple elementary reality. So that is, I would like to say, that every new cities or city planners, urban planners, should think about it, that we should have 50, 60 miles radius around big city like Hong Kong or Beijing or Shanghai, where food is grown locally. At this moment, because cities have money, People are wealthy, rich, they can import food from anywhere. Now, something like 15% of fossil fuel used and global warming created comes from agriculture. First of all, you are putting a huge machinery on the land, big combined harvesters and tractors and machinery. So, Farmers are no longer farmers. Agriculture is no longer agriculture. It has become agri-business. Now, there's a great deal of difference between agriculture and agri-business. And when, agri when food becomes business, it becomes a commodity. And the idea of food as sacred source of nourishment, a sacred source of social and family relationship, and also a source of spiritual well-being. So ecological, spiritual, and social, these three dimensions get lost when food is only a commodity, like uh, you put fuel in the car, you put some food in your body as a, as a kind of commodity, and you don't think about it. I think we need to pay greater attention to the quality of food, the sacred quality of food, where it is coming from, how it is packaged, how it is distributed, how it is grown, non-violently. Agriculture turning into agri-industry or industrial agriculture or agri-business becomes a violent. If you take uh, factory farms where animals are kept in confinement, chickens and pigs and cows and all the other animals that we consume, they are kept in cruel conditions. And when you are eating the food produced without compassion and meat you are eating coming from unhappy animals, what is going to be the result? Do you think if you are eating meat of unhappy animals, you will be happy? If you are keeping your animals which are source of your nourishment, source of your well-being, if they are not in well-being themselves, are they going to bring well-being to you? These are fundamental questions that we have to ask. How we treat the soil, even how we treat the earthworms, how we treat our cows, 
and how we treat our seeds and how we treat our pigs and how we treat our trees and how we treat our bushes every living creature upon this earth is our relations and we have forgotten that we think this is only a source of making money so food production is no longer really speaking truly speaking no longer to nourish the society no longer to feed the people feeding the people is only a by product of agri business and industrial agriculture the main purpose of modern industrial agri business is to make profit to make money and the prices are fixed somewhere in chicago or some big uh, central systems and that creates problem for farmers and particularly in third world farmers they cannot compete with uh, american industrial agriculture because they have they are more efficient in terms of machinery use in terms of uh, fossil fuel use chemicals fertilizers so they cannot compete so they are always losing out so the whole industrial food system and agricultural system has become such a big problem now that we need to address it quite seriously so the first step in order to uh, address this issue is to go local now it's a very big uh, challenge because at the moment food is all global globalization has been the trend and you can import food from anywhere once uh, my friend and mentor ef schumacher was uh, standing outside london and he noticed a lorry full of biscuits produced in edinburgh coming to london and he looked at it the why biscuits are coming all the way from edinburgh to london and as he was wondering he saw another lorry going from london full of biscuits to edinburgh <laughs> now schumacher was an economist oxford graduate and as an economist he started to calculate what is the economic factor in this system that a lorry full of biscuits coming from edinburgh to london and london to edinburgh every day drivers driving lorry driving driving bold driving the roads are built the fossil fuel are imported from saudi arabia from iraq from no everywhere to do what to take biscuits from edinburgh to london and from london to edinburgh he was puzzled then he said oh well i'm mere an economist i'm not a nutritionist perhaps when you transport biscuits from edinburgh to london and london to edinburgh the nutritional value of biscuits will go up <laughs> now this is not merely a light hearted joke it is a very serious matter and not only from edinburgh to to london biscuits i have seen myself i was once in france and i went to a shop and i saw scottish water bottled in a plastic bottle all the way from scotland highland water because in scotland we have very pure clean water uh, in highlands and this is why scottish whiskey is very famous because of its purity of water so i saw this scottish water being sold in france and then i was with a friend and he said but you know satish perrier water from france is sold in scotland <laughs> now scottish highland beautiful delicious pure clean crystal clean water not good enough for scottish and the french water not good enough for french so they are exporting french water to scotland and scottish water to france i can understand 
if there was a trade between Scottish whisky mm -hmm. and French wine. Mm -hmm. That's a fair trade. I'm not against trade, but I'm against this mad, unwise, uh, without any uh, proper logic or reason, this mad transportation just going and we need fossil fuel for it and for we go to war to protect our resources of fossil fuel and how we use that fossil fuel if it was used wisely for real need of people one can understand but it's complete waste so globalization of food not only causes global poverty but also causes global warming and global climate change. And therefore, we need to address the issue of future of food from the point of view that we have to move away from this global market to more locally produced food. Now, when we are producing food, gardening is very important for me. Farming on a small scale. In England, again, I give you example of England, uh, but can, it can be an illustration for many countries, and I don't know how things are happening in China, but a uh, tremendous number of people from rural areas of mainland China are moving towards the cities. And I was talking with Professor Wayne, who was here last night, and we were having uh, lunch together today, and he was saying that the rural uh, areas are now becoming empty and a lot of land people are just leaving in search of jobs in cities why because as I, I said in the beginning the dignity of farming labor is very very low and we have thought that if you are no good to do anything better than you do farming so young people who are educated, they don't want to have in such an inferiority position. So they are leaving the land. So we need to reverse that culture. And we have to, and this is our challenge, we people sitting in this room and people listening to me in many parts of the world or on webcast, it is our challenge because we have lost connection with the soil and we have, we are part of that problem that the dignity of working on the land and producing food is undervalued, under, uh, undermined, and, and, and not considered as very high. So we have to change our minds and we have to start thinking the importance and the dignity of the gardener and the farmer. So we all need to spare some time and touching the earth, touching the soil, planting the seeds. Even if you are living in Hong Kong, you can perhaps have a window box in your balcony or you can perhaps uh, take some time off and go to Kaduri farm and see how they are producing food and maybe find out if there are possibilities of some volunteering. Every one of us need to, Mahatma Gandhi said this, need to respect the manual labor, the dignity of working with your hands and producing food. Bread labor, Mahatma Gandhi called it, uh, Leo Tolstoy called it, bread labor. If we have not put a few hours a week in producing something which is related to our bread, our food, then all our great intellectual achievements, making films or writing books or giving lectures on, in this Hong Kong University like I'm doing now, is all no use. This is why I live so I'm giving lecture tonight, but I live in rural Devon in England. And as I said yesterday, I have 15 apple trees. I have two acres of land. And I would say something like 75 to 80% of my vegetables and fruit I grow myself. And what a joy it is. My writing, my editing of Resurgence magazine, my teaching of um, uh, philosophy at Schumacher College, they are all fine. They, I would consider them as icing on the cake. But when I'm working in the garden, that is my spiritual practice. It is a mindful gardening. When I'm touching the soil, I am nourished not only in my body, but also in my psyche. 
It's a healing process, therapeutic process. If you have uh, mental problems, if you have any kind of physical illness, I advise you that start working in the garden. Don't go first to a pharmacist or a doctor to get some tablets. They will only suppress your illness. If you really want to heal your psyche and heal your body and heal your spirit and soul, touch the soil. Plant a seed. See the seeds grow and harvest the, harvest the fruit and the vegetables and you will see a new life emerging out of your life. So I experienced that. It's, it's a healing process for, for me psychologically, spiritually. Mahatma Gandhi said, whom I follow very much, he said that spirituality is not in the books, in the Bible or Quran or Bhagavad Gita or any other great holy books. Spirituality is not in the mosque or temple or church. Spirituality is in everyday life. How you live every day. Your food has to be spiritual. Your, your uh, uh, cleaning the toilet has to be spiritual. Mahatma Gandhi used to clean toilets. He said, if you want to remove untouchability from India, no good, hoping that some technological solution will come. I will clean my toilet. That was his manual labor, dignity of labor. He was not shy of working with his hands. And so, if we can transform our consciousness, and this is not a, something big philosophy that I want to speak to you. It's not something, uh, a kind of theory that I want to speak to you. I want to speak to you from my heart to say, what are we doing to our mother earth? How are we using it in industrial farming and every business, we are destroying the very branch upon which we are sitting. We are cutting the branch upon which we are sitting. We are going to fall down. And it seems as if humanity is at war against nature. The way we are treating the soil with chemicals and fertilizers and pesticides and herbicides and big, big, huge combined harvesters and ruining the soil and increasing the number of population. Now we have reached 7 billion people. This is not the sane, intelligent way of treating nature and the soil and the earth. So we need to go back to small scale farming. Farming with tools and simple machinery, intermediate technology, as E.F. Schumacher wrote about, intermediate technology. Schumacher, Mahatma Gandhi, Leo Tolstoy, myself, we are not against technology. Technology is good as long as it aids human hands. But when it replaces human hands and makes human people redundant so that technology can do your work, then it becomes oppressive. So we need to use technology in a wise way, in a sane way, so that we are, we are using to ease a little bit of work. So, Schumacher invented a little wheelbarrow with a little motor in it so that he can push his wheelbarrow full of compost. And that way he was a compost maker and a grower. And so you can see many, many great um, human beings who are great intellectuals and who are great uh, thinkers and philosophers and economists like E.F. Schumacher. He was chairman of the Soil Association. And he knew where his wheat is coming from to make his bread. Every month he got a bag of, big bag of supply of organically grown wheat. And he had his own mill to grind the flour. And he will grind the flour in the morning once a week with his hands like this. A little, little. He also had a little intermediate technology machine. Sometimes he put wheat in a little machine which will grind, stone ground again. And he will bake the bread for the family for a whole week. And Schumacher believed, and many Germans believe, that it's better to eat fresh, no, better to eat uh, bread not too fresh. Maybe second day, third day, bread gets better. So that's a kind of Austrian-German idea. So Schumacher followed that. So there is a great source of joy and a pleasure and, and, and a nourishment 
when you are growing the food, baking the bread, grinding the flour, um, cooking the food, sharing with your family, and when you invite the guests, come and have dinner. What is good of dinner if you have bought your food from a supermarket, packaged, and you open it and serve to your guests? That's no good food. To real hospitality, you need to know how to cook the food. So when you are baking bread and you are waiting for it to, to rise and waiting for it to emerge out of the oven, that's a meditation. That's a mindfulness. You are present there. There's no hurry. There's no rush. You are not rushing for anything. You are slowing down to go further. The greatest challenge of this century in our time is to slow down. We are forced to go faster and faster and faster. And this is why we are ruining our environment. We are ruining our land. We are mistreating our animals. And so it is a very basic principle that food must be treated as sacred and we must all participate. You don't have to be full-time farmers, everybody. Maybe only uh, 10, 20, 50, uh, 30% of people can be full-time farmers. But everybody can be a small gardener. A little bit of participation so you know what is involved in producing food. We don't know. Many people in big cities don't know what is involved in producing food. So local food, organic food, food produced with love and care and compassion and without chemicals. Organic means without chemicals. What we are doing, it's very simple things I'm talking to you, very, very elementary. In cities, we buy food, say fruit, bananas, or oranges. We take banana peels and orange peels. What we do with it? In big cities, we don't know what to do with it. So we put in a plastic bag. And then we, that plastic bag is put in a, another bin. And once a week, maybe, a lorry will come and take that away. And where will it take it away? it will take it to some landfill. This is in most cities. Now in some cities changing and they are trying to make it compost, but still very little. Mostly big cities are putting their food waste onto the landfill. And what does that do? That causes greenhouse gases, causes global warming. And we consider ourselves very intelligent, very educated, PhD, doctorate, um, MA, MSc, big, big degrees. Um, uh, we have written papers for scientific journals. But what we do with our vegetable peel, we don't know. So ignorant. Whereas that banana peel, that orange peel, is nourishment for the soil. The soil is waiting for it to be returned back. Soil says to you, that I'm producing cauliflower, food for you, but I'm going, doing it nicely presented to you as a present. When you do a present, you pack it nicely. You have a nice cover on it. So uh, nature is saying to you that I'm producing this wonderful cauliflower with lovely green leaves around it. So the cauliflower, white, beautiful, uh, pristine, clean uh, flower doesn't get damaged. So you get this present beautifully. But I'm giving you this cover, this green leaves outside, to protect your food and, and give you a nicely presented present. But please remember that leaf I want back. I want back. Because that is my nourishment. The soil needs those leaves back. So, Compost making was very important for E.F. Schumacher, who, in whose name we started our college. And so um, that, those leaves should be returned to a compost. And with the compost, compost is called green gold. It's a green gold. It's so valuable, but we don't understand it. We just throw it away and we buy a bag of chemical fertilizers coming from Saudi Arabia oil made of uh, uh, fossil fuel. So, and that's poisonous for the land. And the worms die. And, and, and uh, therefore, uh, soil eventually becomes a desert. 
we need to go from A, B, C. First principles of food. I would like to see Hong Kong University leading the way or Hong Kong Corporation leading, leading the way. No food waste should go on the landfills. And every bit of food after you have waste, uh, thrown away food from restaurants or food left over in your homes or food left over in your supermarkets, all that food, if it is not edible, then it should go back into the compost. In nature, there is no waste. But we humans, we think that we are so clever, so advanced, so progressive, we have so much science, so much technology, therefore waste is our result. So we are waste makers. But waste not, want not. That's an old Chinese saying, I'm told. Waste not, want not. And the, the greatest curse of our modern civilization and modern agriculture is waste. In Britain, 40% of food is wasted. Is it a crime? When people, millions of people in Africa, even in England itself, are hungry without food. And we are wasting 40% of food in transporting, in storage, in uh, sell by date gone, or restaurant, food, you, you name it. The amount of food wasted is colossal. So these are, friends, very simple matters, elementary matters. I should not be required to say these things to this learned audience here. But unfortunately, we have lost our connection with fundamentals. And our head is so high in great ideas and theories and science and technology and philosophy and anthropology and whatnot. So many subjects we learn in our universities, but we don't learn how to plant a seed in the soil and how to see it grow and how to take care of it and how to make compost and how to uh, harvest it and how to preserve it. These are the basic things. I mean, you can have 10 PhDs, but if you don't know how to grow and how to cook, and when you have no money, and now the world is somehow running out of money. Because people, bankers have forgotten how to count money. <laughs> so, so America, England, uh, China is better off for the moment. Hong Kong seems to be better off at the moment. But problems are coming close to, close to you. So be aware. So we need to rise to the challenge and bring food to our local area, and Hong Kong, although is an island, but you are connected with the mainland, and now your transportation and opening is there. So I hope that more, more of your food is coming from within 50, 60 miles radius, and you are not dependent on importing food from too far away. So local food, organic food, and there are many, many wonderful ideas of natural farming, and permaculture, and, and many, many other ideas have been developed by wonderful uh, agronomists of our time, like Ma Masanobu Fukuoka of Japan, and uh, Bill Mollison of Australia, and, um, and Lady E. Balfour of England, who wrote the book called The Living Soil. Soil is a living soil. And she was the founder of the Soil Association. So these great uh, teachers we have, and we must read them and find out how we can come back to the basics, to the, our roots. Let your head be uh, in the space and the sky and, and universal values and universal culture be in your consciousness. But let your feet be on the ground. And you know your soil, you know your earth, you know where food is coming from. If that is sorted out, everything else will be sorted. If this food is not sorted rightly, and if we get into crisis, and we depend on Edinburgh biscuits to London and London biscuits to Edinburgh, we are in peril. Thank you very much.